never, it never seemed like there was a piece of music that I really wanted to listen to. This is what happens when you get old. But then I noticed my teenage daughters doing the same thing. They just flip through track. I kind of started thinking, you know, a, a, a theory started. Oh, it just boomed into my head. So let's. Our, our basic relationship with music was changing. It was changing fast. And I like it when things change. Especially when it makes you feel a bit uncomfortable and you don't really know what's going on. That's, that's what gets me going. And I started seeing the whole history of the 20th century re music was the history of record music. The first commercial recordings came out in about the year 1901, I think it was. And through the 20th century, as the technology to record music evolved, it seduced and sucked in every form of music. All the old music, you know, the pre-recorded music, all, all the classical, pre-classical, and all the folk music and the world music and jazz, and I to say pop and rock were genres of music that evolved out of the technology to record. It all wanted to become recorded music. It all wanted to become this thing that you can just switch on and it comes out of a speaker. And in a sense, it all became one genre, recorded music. You know, you might be listening to Bach, he might be listening to Stravinsky, I might be listening to the Beatles, and somebody else might be listening to the Backstreet Boys, but it's all actually the same. It's just something you sit down, you switch on, and you do nothing, and it's there. It had taken away from music so much of what music was about, which was before, which was about the time, place, occasion. All we were left with was Christmas music, it was vaguely about time. And, uh, and I was thinking, maybe what's actually happening now, what the, what the, the iPod is, is speeding up the process, is actually making recording music come to the past. You know, one of the great art forms of the 20th century, that we were leaving. It was beginning to die. It was no longer in, nowhere near as important as it had been. Now, some art forms die overnight, like silent films. The day the movies were, came out, the first one, that was it for silent films, you know, as an art form. Other, other art forms take, you know, a few centuries to die. But I felt this is the this, this thing that had been so important to me. Okay, let's switch slightly now. I've got a Land Rover, some of you might have seen it out the front there, at the back. I've had that 18 years now. But at the same time as I get this iPod, I'm driving along on my Land Rover. And somebody's snapped my aerial, so I haven't got the radio on. Nobody to talk to, no CDs to play. So I'm listening to the sound of the diesel engine. And diesel engines have got lots of level, bass rumble, you know, all bits. And I found myself singing along uh, as a driver. Oh, within, within a minute, it's not just my voice, there's a couple of other voices, you know, obviously in my imagination, but pretty vivid. They're, 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 they're singing with me. Uh, within another minute, I've got a hundred Vikings in the back of that land. Oh, huge, big, swirling chords, no melodies or rhythms, but it sounded fucking great. And then a while later, I could hear all the choir boys singing along in harmony with the wind blowing through the wing mirror. Now, maybe it's because I used to sing in church choirs when I was a kid, in school choirs, and like, you know, choral music is something I understood, so maybe it's natural for me to hear that. And it happened again, and then at some point I gave it an A, the 17, this and if I was writing at home, having a bit of a block about something, instead of going down and putting on a cup of tea, I'd get out into my land over, drag down a few lanes, so I could hear this, this 17. And I tell you, it was more like, it was better than anything on that iPod. And this was, this, I mean, it was just in my imagination. So, my theory about recorded music and this thing, well, they weren't kind of, they sort of getting close together. So I decided to see if I could make this reality, what I could hear in the head. And they did. They recorded a journey in the Land Rover, got a bunch of blokes in the studio, explained to them, a few wines and beers, and we spent the evening putting this thing together. At the end of the evening, it was sounding stunning. It was sounding better than my imagine. I actually, on the drive, 
Oh, I had a bit of a fantasy that. Yeah, yeah, forget about that. Oh, 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 this is the CD. It's going to get worldwide smash. People are not going to resist this. <laughs> but I woke up the next morning realizing nobody in their right mind is going to want to buy a CD. A bunch of blokes going, along with a Land Rover Enzo. But I knew something magical happened. And I wanted to experience that again. So, about that time, this is 2003. I wrote a text. Now it's quite naive and idealistic, but I can still stick by it. All recorded music has run its course. It has all been consumed, traded, downloaded, understood, heard before, sampled, learned, revived, judged, and found wanting. Dispensed with all previous forms of music and music making and start again. Year zero now. A line in the sand. The 17 is a choir. Their music has no history, follows no traditions, or recognizes no contemporaries. The 17 has many voices. They use no libretto, lyrics, or words. No time signatures, rhythm, or beats. And have no knowledge of melody, counterpoint, or harmony. The 17 struggle with the dark and respond to the light. Oh, but then, within a minute, it's not just 
my voice, there's a couple of other voices, you know, obviously in their imagination, but pretty vivid. They're, they're, they're singing with me. Oh. Within another minute, I've got a hundred Vikings in the back of that land. Oh, huge, big, swirling chords, no melodies or rhythms, but it's fucking great. And then a while later, I could hear all the choir boys singing along in harmony with the wind blowing through the wing mirror. Now maybe it's because I used to sing in church choirs when I was a kid, school choirs, and making you know, a choral music is something I understood, so maybe it's natural for me to hear that. And it happened again, and at some point I gave it a name, the 17th, this fantasy choir or something like that. And if I was writing a poem, having a bit of a block about something, instead of going down and putting on a cup of tea, I'd get out into my land door, drive down a few lanes, so I'd be here for us. So, my theory about recorded music and this thing, well, they weren't kind of, they were sort of getting close together. So I decided to see if I could make this reality, what I could do in my head. And they did, they recorded a journey in the Land Rover, got a bunch of blokes in the studio, explained to them, a few wines and beers, and we spent the evening putting this thing together. At the end of the evening, it sounded stunning, it sounded better than my magic. I actually, on the drive home, I had a bit of a fantasy that, yeah, yeah, forget about it. Oh, I will lose this. It's going to get worldwide stuff. People are not going to resist this. <laughs> but I woke up the next morning realizing nobody in their right mind is going to want to buy a bunch of blood stuff <laughs> along with a Land Rover engine. <laughs> but I knew something magical happened. And I wanted you to experience that again. So, about that time, this is 2003. I wrote a text. Now it's quite naive and idealistic, but I can still stick by it. All recorded music has run its course. It has all been consumed, traded, downloaded, understood, heard before, sampled, learned, revived, judged, and found wanting. Dispensed with all previous forms of music and music making and start again. Year zero now, aligned in the sound. The 17 is a choir. Their music has no history, follows no traditions, or recognizes no contemporaries. The 17 has many voices. They use no libretto, lyrics, or words. No time signatures, rhythm, or beats. And have no knowledge of melody, counterpoint, or harmony. The 17 struggle with the dark, and respond to the light. All recorded music has run its course. It has all been consumed, traded, downloaded, understood, heard before, sampled, learned, revived, judged, and found wanting. Dispensed with all previous forms of music and music making and start again. Year zero now, aligned in the sand. The 17 is a choir. Their music has no history, follows no traditions, or recognizes no contemporaries. The 17 has many voices. They use no libretto, lyrics, or words. No time signatures, rhythm, or beats. And have no knowledge of melody, counterpoint, or harmony. The 17 struggle with the dark and respond to the light. All recorded music has run its course. It has all been consumed, traded, downloaded, understood, heard before, sampled, learned, revived, judged, and found wanting. Dispensed with all previous forms of music and music making and start again. Year zero now, aligning in the sand. The 17 is a choir. Their music has no history, follows no traditions, or recognizes no contemporaries. The 17 has many voices. They use no libretto, lyrics, or words. No time signatures, rhythm, or beats. And have no knowledge of melody, counterpoint, or harmony. The 17 struggle with the dark, responding to the light. 